Hello and happy first day of learning second grade Smarties. So we are starting our first lesson in math today and we are trying to understand mental math strategies. So last year you were introduced to something called fact families and that's when we have a we have two parts in a whole, and we use those parts in a whole to make a fact family with two adding sentences and two subtracting sentences. So we are going to start this school year with talking about fact families. So if you go ahead and look at this first page, I'm in lesson one right now. It says, how can you use fact families in counting on to add and subtract in your head? Ooh, so mental math means that we are doing it in our heads. So that means that we can draw a picture in our head. If we need to, we can use our hands. But when we know our math facts, we are able to use those mental math strategies to find what parts or whole we need. So this first one says, you know how to draw a picture to subtract. So over here, we have a subtraction sentence. Our whole is 12. It wants us to take away three. And if we drew a picture, we know that we would have 12. We would X out three because we're taking away and we would circle and know what's left over. But how can we do it in our heads? So we can use fact families when we are doing mental math. So in this number sentence, 12 minus three, it wants us to find the difference. The difference is the part that is left over. So it says to think of the problem as three plus a missing part equals 12. So over here, we have our number bond. We have our two, what would be our two parts and our whole. It wants us to think of how we make those two adding sentences and the two subtracting sentences. So right now we have 12 minus three. Well, I don't have 12 fingers that I can take away from. So if I know what part I can add to three to make 12, I can find the difference for 12 minus three. So if I'm doing mental math and I don't have enough fingers, I can start with finding my adding sentence first and then figuring out what I'm subtracting. So I'm going to put three in my head and I know my whole is going to be at 12. So I'm going to start at three. So I'm going to pound and count on till 12. Now it's going to be harder to pound and count the bigger our second part is because we might not have enough fingers. So that's why it's important to memorize our math facts. So here we go. I'm going to pound at three and count on to 12. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12. I had to add nine. So if I am adding, so I know that my missing part here would be nine. So I know that three and nine are my parts and as a whole, they make 12. So what would my missing part be here? I have three and I have my whole 12. My missing part is nine. Ooh. So if I make another adding sentence, showing these parts in a different way, you tell me, what would I need to do? Would I write three plus nine again? Would I write 12 plus three equals nine? Well, I know it's not gonna equal nine because 12 is my whole. So I'm going to start with nine. Good job, guys. So I have nine plus three equals 12. Those are the same parts that make the same whole. Now, they wanted us to know what the difference was in 12 minus 3. Well, we figured out that 9 plus 3 made 12. So if I have 12 and I take those three away, what part do I know it's going to be? 9, right? Because when we know the fact families, then we can figure out what our missing parts or our whole will be. So it wants us to show in this final number sentence what... Could, how else could I show three and nine in a different way for the subtraction sentence? I did 12 minus three equals nine. I can also do 12 minus nine. And I know what will be left over because in my fact family, I know that three and nine together make 12. Kiss your brains, guys. So we can use fact families 
to help us figure out a missing part or to help us subtract. So we can also use counting on, and we use that strategy just when we were doing the fact families. So right here, underneath our, underneath where it says I can count on, it says what is 11 minus eight? So instead of trying to figure out how we can subtract with our fingers, we can think of it as an adding sentence. We can move our parts in our holes to where we add our missing part to find that hole of 11. So think of it too, like if I have another number bond, and I like to think in number bonds, because if I know that my hole is 11, when I subtract, I always start with my hole. Say it with me, when I subtract, I start with the hole. So I know 11 is my hole, and I know eight is one of my parts. I have a missing part. So it says to think of it as adding eight plus a missing part to find 11. So below, it says to circle eight in the table. So I have eight. And then it says to mark each box you count to get to 11. So I'm going to count on after eight. I'm not going to count eight as one of, one of the marks that I do. So after eight, nine, 10, 11. How many marks did I make after eight? to get to 11. I'm gonna count them. One, two, three, right? So we know how many numbers did we count? We counted three. All right, so now it wants us to complete the fact family. I have my parts in my hole up here, right? I know that 11 is my whole and eight and three are my two parts. So it says, now you know your four facts, write the facts. So you are doing this with me in your own instruction book, guys. So think out loud with me. Eight plus, what's my other part? Three equals 11. We have another adding sense. How could I show these parts in a different way? Because what do we know we are going to make all together? We know 11 is going to be our whole. So I can go ahead and write 11 here. I already know that's going to be my whole. So I can, am I going to start with eight again? No, but what are our two parts? Good job. So we can start with three and we know the other part would be eight because we're sticking with the same parts and whole. And 11 minus eight, we solve that up here. So how many do we have left when we take the eight away, think of our think of our number bond right here. We would have three. Good job. Now this is tricky. Do not get tricked. Tell yourself, I will not be tricked. Okay. When I subtract, I always start with my whole. What was my whole in my number bond? It was 11, right? So I know when I subtract, I always start with my whole. Now we did 11 minus eight equals three. What is the other way I can show those parts? You go ahead and write it down and let's see if we have the same thing. I'll give you five, four, three, two, one, zero. So in this subtraction sentence, I did 11 minus eight equals three. I could also show these parts as 11 minus three equals 10. It's 10, right? That's how many would be left? No, silly Miss Mason. I know I gotta stick with my same parts. So 11 minus three equals eight. All right, so friends, we do not have partners to work with right now, but we can think about this out loud. It says, to talk about it, you want to count on to find two plus six. Which number would you start with? I want you talk. I want you to talk to your grown up that's in the same room. Maybe your brother or sister is in the same room. Maybe you have a pet turtle or a pet rabbit, like Carolyn does. Maybe you could talk to someone to think about if you were going to count on which part would make sense to start with. If I was counting on, would it make sense for me to start with two and count on six more? Or would it make more sense to count 
to start with six and count on two more. Which one would you start with? I want you to talk to someone about it and then solve it. What would two plus six or six plus two make. All right, second grade Smarties, you will be filling out these two pages and you will also be doing two pages in your practice book for math today. Make sure that when you are finished to take a picture with your web, with your webcam on your computer or your grown up can take a picture and send it to me on Seesaw. Tell me, where are you gonna send it to me? Seesaw. All right, guys, have a great day. Keep learning and have that growth mindset. It's okay to make mistakes. Mistakes help us grow. All right, guys, I will see you tomorrow with tomorrow's math lesson. Bye, guys.